Good morning dear students. I hope you all are staying healthy. Let's start our day with a beautiful quote. Lord, bless the food before us, the family beside us and the love between us. Amen. Today we will start our next chapter of history section. Chapter 4 What books and burials tell us. Now children in this chapter we will study or we will learn about the ancient books and the burials. Now children you all must be knowing what are books but do you know what is burial? The act of putting a dead body into the ground after death or a graveyard and remains found in it. So basically it is a graveyard. Don't be horrified children it is just a chapter Now children we cannot think of a library and a burial place together right They are very different places used for different purposes One is where we go to learn and the other is where we go to bid goodbye to our loved ones One place makes us happy and the other makes us sad but they have one thing in common both books and burials teach us many things about our country culture and our ancestors so children let's find out what we can learn from books and burial places first let us see children how and what books emerged first in the era So children in school you all must have gone to the library and you must have visited or seen different kind of books related to drama mystery horror religious action and adventure so today out of those books today we are going to study about one of the oldest books in the world called vedas now children vedas were divided into four types they were rigveda Samveda, Yajurveda and Atharveda. So here you can see the remain of the Vedas. First, let us start with what is Rigveda. So Rigveda was one of the oldest Vedas which has more than thousands of hymns and these hymns are called suktas. The word suktas means well said. Children before moving further, let's see what are hymns. Hymns are religious songs or poem in praise of god or goddesses. So, hymns were called suktas. That means that the suktas were the sayings. Children initially the hymns given in the Rig Vedas were recited only. So, they were not found in written form and they were later composed and printed. in less than 200 years ago so children who composed these suktas they were the rishis and the sages who laid down the suktas and the other hymns and in this rigveda there were three gods who were mentioned they were agni god of fire indra warrior god and som a plant from which a drink is made which was treated as a god now children rigveda was written in old or vedic sanskrit which was very different from the sanskrit which we have today sanskrit is a part of family of languages known as indo-european so children Indo-European language was a mixture of five Indian languages such as Assamese, Gujarati, Hindi, Kashmiri and Sindhi and six European languages such as English, French, German, Greek, Italian and Spanish. Now let's see rest of the Vedas. Next is Samveda. It talks about the musical notes and the chantings next yajurveda talks about the various rituals and the sacrifices made next is atharvaveda which 
talks about various spells and charms so children this was the description of all the four vedas now next let's see how the vedas were divided further so children each of the vedas were further divided into four parts they were samhita which was a collection of mantras hymns prayers charms and sacrificial formulas next was brahmanas which means meaning of the rituals next was aryankas which talked about the theology and meditation and contains the philosophical portions of the brahmanas next is upanishads which was the philosophical or the concluding part both aryankas and upanishads were considered as the vedant as they dealt with towards the end vedant means the knower of the vedas now children rig vedas even describes or talks about the life of the people and the various books describe the sacrifices done by the people these people were described or differentiated in terms of the work they do the language they speak the place they belong to their family their community and cultural practices mainly they were divided into groups based on their work as first as brahmins who were priest the priest also called brahmins were the one who performed various rituals and sacrifices next group of people were called rajas they were the people who performed rituals rajas were asked to perform the rituals because at that time they were not like the rajas what we know today they did not have any capital city or palaces or army nor did they collect any taxes as they did not have any concept of their sons automatically succeeding their father later on they made their regions well known as janpads or mahajanpads then the king started to maintain their army and collected taxes next group of people were jana or vish or a common man the common man was called jan or vish which was derived from vaishyas so children in rigveda the common man were called jan which were further divided into purujana bharatjana and yadujana next group of people were called aryas and they were the people who used to compose the hymns for the vedas next group of people were called dasas or dasyus they were children the indo european people and they were treated as slaves captured from war then we have dasas who were males and the dasyus were females and they were considered as slaves they were captured in wars by the opponent's army they were treated as they were treated as the property of their owners who could make them do whatever work they wanted so they were treated as slaves now children before starting next topic let's see what are megaliths megaliths were the large stones used to build a structure or monument either alone or together with other stones megalithic means structures made of large stones put together without the use of mortar or cement so children what are megaliths megaliths are the buildings made uh, made out of large boulders without the use of cement now let's see what are megaliths and burials while the rigveda was being composed in the northwest of the subcontinent there were other developments also like constructing buildings now let's talk about the type of buildings and the burials of this period when we talk about the burial the most important features of this was the big stone boulders known as megaliths 
These megaliths were used on the burial sites to mark the burial areas. The practice of erecting megaliths began about 3000 years ago and was prevalent throughout the Deccan, South India and the Northeast and Kashmir. There were also surface as well as underground megaliths and were known as cist. So children megalith areas were the areas which were used as burial areas. All these burial graves have something common in them. Generally, the dead were buried with food, water in the pots called black and red ware. So children, in these burial areas, there were graves which were uh, having the dead bodies and along with them, the food and water was also, uh, you know, buried in the black and red ware pots. Now, on the burial sites, we have a demarcation between males and females. The skeletons of females were found with more jewellery compared to the skeleton of male, as males were also using jewellery at that time. Now children, in this picture also you can see the skeleton is having more jewellery. This means it was a skeleton of a female. I hope you don't get scared. So let's read on. To check out that the skeleton was of a male or a female, the pelvic area was checked. The pelvic area which was larger in size was considered of a woman due to the childbearing capacity. Thus, there were various differences found in the skeleton during the excavation. Now children, let's study about the burial sites deeply. So Brahmagiri was one of the sites where a huge number of burials were seen. So children burials were mainly in the form of skeletons with the beads, bangles, shells etc. So children Inamgaon was also one of the other burial sites. So Inamgaon was also one of the case study mentioned in the books. It is a site on the river Goth, a tributary of Bhima. It was occupied between 3600 and 2700 years ago. Here, adults were generally buried in the ground, laid out straight with the head towards the north. Sometimes burials were within the houses along with the pots of red and black in color containing food and water. There was one classic example of a man who was found buried in a large four-legged clay jar in the courtyard of a five-roomed house that is one of the largest houses at that site. This house also had a granary. The body was placed in a cross-legged position. So children, these were the different ways in which the people at that time used to bury the people, the dead people and these places were specially called megaliths. Archaeologists have also found seeds of wheat, barley, rice, pulses, millets, peas and sesame, bones of a number of animals and many bearing cut marks that show may have been used as food have also been found. These include cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, dog, horse, ass, pig, sambar, hare and mongoose. So children, archaeologists have found number of eatables which have been put along with the dead people in the graveyard. Let's read further. There are also some examples of the skeleton of some animals of China. The special thing about the skeleton was oracle bones. These bones were bones of the animals and have something writings on them. The most interesting part about the bones was that these bones were heated and cracked. Based on the shape they get after cracking, the fortune was predicted by the fortune teller. Definitely, there were mistakes, but it was a common practice in the major part of China. At that time, kings in China used to live in palaces. 
they had large quantities of wealth including large elaborately decorated bronze vessels in contrast to the kings of india there was no use of iron seen in the chinese region at that time children with this we come to an end of the chapter now children you all can see the map work here i have ticked the places which you have to mark on the physical map of india kindly mark it and stick it in your notebook if names are not clear i'll write it in the another slide first is burza hum second is mehergarh third is bhimbetka fourth is inamgaon fifth is hunsgi sixth is kurnol caves seventh is brahmagiri Have a nice day children. Thank you children.